Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Nigel here, Nigel's Modeling Bench, and here we are with part eight. And I am actually filming this about a minute after I finished part seven. And if you remember in part seven, we had the problems with getting the, the thread lock into the holes and everything. I've come up with a way. Um, basically, this is what I'm doing. I've got a cocktail stick. And because of this dispenser, you get like a ton. You, you give it the slightest little ease. I mean, I'm not even making a dent in the. You get like a gallon of this stuff rush out. So what I do is put on a cocktail stick and then I come along and just place it on the first hole on the second hole into the third hole and then into the fourth hole and then you can basically move the cocktail stick up and down inside the hole and wipe the thread lock into the threads like so and then you can place that on pick up a screw and put a screw in like so okay pick up another one and I've got four or three Place that in the hole. Remember what I said, put the put the screws in the holes first. Don't tighten anything up until you've got all your screws in. Okay, so there we go. That one's in. Get that one up. They're in nice and tight now, and then we'll do the same now on the last one. Just put it in the hole, in the hole, go right into the hole, and then right in and rub it off. Okay, so then we've got a thread lock in all those holes. Pick up a screw. Makes it so much easier when the hole stands up on its own, I must have, I must be honest. And then we just put that in. that one in and then put the last one in just nip them down And there we are. I'm going to go on and just check them all now before the thread lock sets. And there we go. You can see it's a much neater job doing it that way and having all the thread lock coming out everywhere. So that's them on. What do we need to do next? Okay, so now we're at the point where we're going to fit these um, <clears throat> these idlers, return rollers, sorry. And we've got the, the eight here, the six there. We've got our backings here, which are our mounts for them. Spindles, spacers, and then all the, the bearing spaces and everything in there. So um, basically we've got our nuts as well in, the, in, in B. So basically what we're going to do first of all is, um, is basically dry brush. Now, <clears throat> the reason I'm doing this first of all is because once we put these on with grease, the grease will come out onto the wheel. Um, and then if you try and dry brush, you're going to be spearing the grease around. So I'm going to dry brush these first. Now, this is totally artistic license. You don't need to do it. It's just something I want to do just to give it all some highlight and make it pop. It's, at first, it's going to look quite garish. But don't worry, at the end of the day, it will be broken down. 
So what I'm going to do is I've got this XF71, which is a cockpit green. I'm just taking some paint out of the lid because it's thicker in the lid. Now, I wouldn't normally dry brush with acrylics. I would normally use enamels, but I'm guessing a lot of you guys don't have <coughs> enamels, excuse me. And this isn't a tutorial, so I'll use acrylics. And basically what I'm doing is just very lightly brushing over the bolt heads. And I'm going to very lightly go over the rim, the wheel rim, and make sure that I'm not getting any on the tyre. And all it's doing is just adding a tiny bit of highlight just to make the details pop out. Okay, now the more you use it, the harder you can brush it. And this is one of the problems with dry brushing with acrylics is it dries so fast that you kind of end up with nothing on the brush and almost immediately. Okay, now I don't know if you can see the difference, but basically what we're doing is just highlighting and making those, making the details just pop out a little bit. It's, it's not, um, actually correct if you like it's artistic license and it's what modelers do to to kind of make their models more enhanced if you like it's like panel lines in aircraft when you look at an aircraft you know from if you stand 10 feet away you can't see any panel lines really um but we still like to have panel lines and scribe them and put washes in them and stuff and it just it's just adding something to the to the actual model itself rather than being you know probably strictly accurate if you like right and then when we do some washes and stuff later on that's when this will really work because the the washes will go around the bolt so you'll end up with a light head a dark area around the bolt and then the olive green everywhere else sorry the olive drab everywhere else and it's um you will see what I mean. You'll see there's method in my madness. Just taking the paint off the brush. Like that. I believe I got some on a tire there, so I can literally wet my finger. Use a bit of scotch bright perhaps. Or a cotton bud, be better. And just rub that green paint off of that tire. Here we go. If you do mess up, remember you've got eight of these wheels. Four of them are going to face inwards, so you can just pick your four worst ones, as it were, and have them facing inwards. So you could kind of ask the question, why are you bothering to do this on four of them? Because I can. Got some paint on the tire there again. You see, that one's not very nice because it's got too much on it. So we'll have that one facing in. Yeah, dry brushing with acrylics is horrible. If this was a, like a 35th scale model, I certainly, I certainly wouldn't be dry brushing with acrylics. <clears throat> Move on to these. I'm just going to lightly enhance these bolt heads on here. And hopefully there you can see the difference that it makes. It's just kind of, it just kind of brings it to life. Especially where these are located, you know, they're underneath the tracks, up underneath the arches or the fenders. The brush is getting really dried out now. If you don't have a short brush like this, get one of your old brushes and um, 
cut it down so it's just you know a few millimeters long it's no good trying to dry brush with something like this it's you know it's, it's not going to work it's too soft so you need something stiff he says there we go so that's that now what we do now is we will just very quickly go over these centers just to bring out some life in them hopefully you can see the difference it's uh, it's very very subtle but quite obvious if you know what I mean if that's not an oxymoron then I don't know what is There we go, a bit more paint on the brush. We'll just do these. That's too much. So I can come along and wipe it off. Just like so with a wet Q-tip. See, sometimes you get that. There's a lump of paint that's in the brush. So we get the Q-tip, wet it, rub it over there and it'll take that off. If I was dry brushing with enamels, you wouldn't get any of these issues. <clears throat> it's a lot more controllable. It stays wetter in the brush for longer. Okay, so there we go. So that's that's kind of the effect we're looking for. Like that. Well, that's stiff on there. So that's the effect we're looking for. Is just getting that that highlighted look. Okay, okay. So here's another effect we're going to use. Now I've done these wheels already. What I've got here is an aftermarket black wash. Um, this is AK, and what you'll find is. You know, they'll do a product for NATO camo vehicles, they'll do a, a wash for trains, a wash for planes, a wash for Michelin tyres, a wash for Pirelli tyres, a wash for winter vehicles, a wash for summer vehicles. It's just ridiculous. It's a black wash. Um, don't be taken in by all these different products for different things. So I find this to be too thick. So what I do is I take some out of the bottle and I put it in a upturned Tamiya jar like this, okay? You can see there's a little lump of something there, which isn't good. We'll get rid of that. Um, and I mean, this is old. This is very old. So I'm not even sure if you can get these anymore, but that's basically what it is. It's a wash for, for NATO camo vehicles. It's a black wash. And then what I've got here is some odorless thinners. <clears throat> Make sure you use odorless thinners. Don't use ordinary turpentine. Don't use white spirits, um, use lower low order thinners, or you can use cigarette lighter fluid. I'm just going to add some there. And the reason you don't use turpentine or anything is it will attack the plastic and it won't necessarily attack it straight away. You might find your model become very brittle and break up in a couple of years. And then we just thin that even more to literally it's it's like a dirty thinners rather than a than a paint. Um, so we've got that there that's really thinned out and what we can do then is come along and just dab it onto all our bolt heads like this okay now you can be as sloppy with it as you like it doesn't matter right and I'll show you what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the camera off in a minute let these all dry out you can see what they look at the moment they're all black and shiny and everything yeah when I turn I'll turn the camera off let them dry and then I'll show you what it looks like when it's dried out. And again, this is it's just a little modeling technique. If you're new to the hobby, it's something you can do to make your model pop. Um, works really well with like stuff like engines and stuff, anything where there's nuts and bolts and detail grills. You know, um, 
where you've got some mesh or something around an engine cover. It's um, it's excellent. You can see I, I can just brush it all the way around if I want to. It doesn't really matter um, because it's so thin that the areas where I brush it, unless it's actually where it's sort of built up in the corners, that's the only place that will really stand out. Okay, now you can do a thing called a pin wash, which is basically what I'll do here. So I'll come along and I will just literally touch in the area I want the wash to go. Okay, so just touch in there, touch in there. And that might be what you do on a tank. You might go in around like light fittings and stuff. You might go into where there's hatches, hinges, whatever, and just literally just touch it in like that. Okay. And then there's the also the overall wash where you just come along, get your wash on the brush and just brush it on. You could do it either way. Bits like this doesn't really matter. If it was like a say it was an M1 I was doing in you know desert um, desert yellow, then I would do a, definitely do a pin wash because this would make the whole thing darken up. So what I'm going to do is leave that now to dry out, and I'll switch the camera off. Oh, I've got to do these, haven't I? And I'll um, I'll let you see what it looks like when we come back. Remember, I've dry brushed it already with that light green colour. So that will actually highlight, you can see the bolts will highlight from there. So we'll put it on the whole of these, I think. And you must make sure if you've used acrylic paints, you must use for this, you must use enamels. Don't use acrylics because what will happen is the acrylic thinners will attack the paint, whatever's under there. OK, now the other thing you can do, if you feel like on here it's a bit too wet, there's a bit too much, you can dry your brush off and then you can come along with your brush and your brush will actually wick it up. Rather than rubbing it off with a cloth or going in with a Q-tip, you can just use your brush, dry it off, go in, you can see it pulls it away. OK, I don't know if you saw that then, if I can find another really wet one. Here we go, just get this on the camera. Brush is dry. You can see we've got a wet area there. Come on camera, focus. We'll just touch the brush on there and you can see it pulls it away. And it'll do it again there, pull it away. Okay. So it's it's one of those you, you can be as harsh as you like with it. Alright, so I'll get cleaned up, turn the camera off, I'll come back and show you what it looks like when it's all dried out. Okay, so <clears throat> that area is pretty dry now, um, where I've put the, the black oil on. And as you can see, I forgot to mention as well, you could use for this, you could use oils, but they take a long time to dry. You could use black enamel paint and the, and the thinners, like, a, like a, the enamel thinners, or the low odour thinners, should I say. Um, or you could buy the washes and then thin them down or just use them direct if you want. But if you look in here, you can see there's a difference in these two wheels. You can see the wheel on the right, the black is a lot heavier than the wheel on the left and also in between there's, a, there's some marks we might want to get rid of and this is the beauty of using these oils what i could do i've got a tiny drop of the odorless thinners in here so i can get this brush this is again this dry brushing brush and then just remove the majority of it and then i can go in here and just go in between all the bolts and remove what i don't like so if I want to take it off the top of the bolt heads, I can. If I want to get it all out of there, I can. If I completely soak the brush, I can remove all of it. As you can see, we can go in there and remove what we don't like. OK, so I'll just show you that close up. So we can go, can I see a... You can see that I can go in there and just stroke that away and get rid of get rid of any of the black that I don't like. Um, I can do it on these as well. I've got some black in between the bolts we don't like. Just rub it away. Clean the brush. A little bit more thinners on it. Try it out. And 
and just brush it away. And as I say, all of this is not necessary for you to build a radio control tank. This is just, I'm just doing this to show you, or A, to show you how it's done and B, or how I do it. And B, it's because, as I say, once these are on and the grease gets in there and stuff, it'll make life a lot more difficult because you'll find that when you start doing stuff like this, you'll start pulling grease out. So you don't want to be rubbing grease all over your tires. And there we go. So that's, that's that done. As you can see now, what we've got is when you look at these, you can see that the the bolts are hi highlighted, it makes them pop, you can see the little bit of green on the dry brushing is, is sort of making them stand out and it's it's just, it's all artistic license just to make your model sort of just stand out among the rest if you like. Um, you know, better than having just a, a green blob of plastic if you like. But you know, there are millions of different weathering techniques. There's thousands of videos on YouTube covering it. I'm no expert. I'm just an ordinary guy like you. But um, you know, you can uh, do this to your heart's content. So there we go. I'm going to let this just dry off now for a few more minutes and then we'll um we'll get this all assembled right so we're ready to go now i've gone through these eight wheels and i've chosen my four favorites to go on the outside and the four not so favorite to go on the inside so uh there's there's those we've got our six wheels here four spindles for them four backing plates six backing plates six spindles six spacers four tubes six tubes four nuts six nuts Spanner and some grease. Now you'll see this tube of grease has been used already. I'm basically using the one from the Land Rover. This is the same grease that comes with this kit. I see no point in opening another tube when I've already got this one open. So um, basically I've also gone through, uh, this is, um, is a four or a five millimeter, I think it's a four. Yeah, it's a four millimeter drill. And what I've done, I've noticed the wheels were slightly tight on the spindle, so I've gone round and removed any overspray from these with a bit of Scotch Brite, and then I've just gone in with this drill and just literally just spun the wheel on it just to remove any paint. I haven't sort of it, it slides on there. It's a nice fit. Just go and basically remove any paint that's in there that makes them stiff, um, and then it makes them because they're not. You, you don't want them to stay still and have the tracks just right over them. You want them to turn with the tracks for a bit of realism, so they need to be very free free turning. So when we look down in here, if we concentrate on these six initially, um, what we've got is the, the spindle there, then it's going to go through the wheel, through the backing plate. That's funny, I thought there were six of those C3s, there's only actually four. So I did lose one to the carpet monster and spent about half an hour looking for it and I realised I needn't have bothered. I thought there were six of those, never mind. So we're going to put this through here, through there with the shorter tube on the back, and then we're going to put the nut on the back to hold it into the chassis or into the hull. So first things first, put a bit of grease on the spindle. Now, what I'm going to do is put the spindle through the axle and then put some grease on the back. Reason for that is I don't want to be pulling the grease. Yeah, that's not going to work, is it? I think probably the best thing to do is to get a cocktail stick. and actually push the grease into the bore. Like that. What you don't want to do is put it on, if you put the grease on the spindle, when you push it in, it'll just all scrape off and ooze around the outside. And that's not something you want. So, if I just put some grease on the cocktail stick, this is easier said than done. You don't need a lot, you don't need a hell of a lot, it's just a, a small amount. In fact, if you do put too much, it'll attract all the dirt and dust in there. So there we go, we can push that in. And now that's free, free turning on there. Okay. And then we put the 
shallow backing plate on and that will lock into the spindle like so and then we can put that there ready for assembly so we'll take another one get some grease on the cocktail stick wipe it in around the bore push our shaft in yeah what I, this is what I wanted to avoid was getting grease on the parts it's easier said than done Okay, so that goes in lines up like so. Okay, we'll do another one. Drop the shaft in. As I'm speaking, part seven is uploading. Um, I've just edited it and I've noticed there was uh, a bit of ranting in there, which um, I'm not going to apologise for. Maybe some of it was a bit needless, but uh, yeah, let's just say. Um, I've had to change my comment settings, which is why I thought I wasn't getting any comments. I thought it would just, um, you know, use its algorithms to withhold stuff that was abusive or had swearing in it or whatever. But um, it doesn't. It just, it just withholds everything. It would seem. It, 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 uh, there's a setting where it says you can withhold potentially um, whatever comments. Um, so obviously it classes everything as potentially whatever comments. So, so there we go. Right, so let's do these outers. So we'll put some grease in the wheel there. In fact, what I'll do is I'll grease up all the wheels first. Turn this into a Sherman assembly lining. Oops, should have done that. The reason I'm trying to avoid getting grease on the parts is because um, I want to give all this a coat of matte varnish once it's all on there just to give the paint an extra extra chance of not just wearing off because we don't want green tires do we so that's going to go through there like so and then that's going to go on there like so and then we're going to put one of these spacers on like that and there we go so that's how that goes. So we'll take another spindle through there. Wheel, spacer, your hub.
What's that on? It's like a piece of silicon or something. Okay, so they're ready to go on now. So we get the hull, get our fingers grease free. In fact, I'm gonna go and wash my hands. Okay, so where's our thread lock? We need the thread lock again. Let's get that over here. So uh, what we need to do now is get this, one of these assemblies, put one of these tubes on the back like this. And then we're gonna drop that into that hole like so. Take a nut. Okay, we've got hardly any thread exposed, so we're going to put thread lock on there first. Try and do this so you can see what I'm doing. And then if I can turn this whole wheel assembly, get it started. There we go. And I can take my little spanner here, or wrench. And then tighten that up firmly. Yeah, we don't want it undoing. And there's our first return roller in place. And we'll do one of the smaller ones. So we take the shorter tube. That's going to sit in the back there. Sit that in there like that. Drop of thread lock. The drop is impossible. Get that started. Yep. Then we can take our wrench. And go in there. Pull that down nice and snug. Check everything turns okay, and it all does. It all turns absolutely fine. Okay, so next one is going to be a small one. We'll put the tube on. Put this through. Take some thread lock. Take a nut. Take our wrench. Sorry if I'm going off camera, guys. Just trying to see what I'm doing and, and keep it in frame for you as well is not easy. All right, so next is going to be a, a big one or a doubler, whatever you want to call it. Slide the tube on. Slide that into place. Gallon of thread lock. Not the nut. Oops. Drop the spanner or the wrench. And then next is a small one. And with the tube. Planet sized globe of thread lock, or globe sized drop of thread lock, should I say? Start the nut, which is easier said than done on this one. The nut doesn't want to start, so take the wrench. There we go, there's our idlers on one side, and now you can see that they're all together. You can see the effects of the the uh, the dry brushing and the wash and everything. It works, works a treat. And there we go. 
So soon we'll be masking all this up and then spraying the rest of the hull. Why didn't I spray the rest of the hull? Because as I say, I want all these joints to be painted over, but they've also got paint under them. Just me, don't have to do it. You know, you could just paint the whole green and then bolt it all together. This is just the way I work with things. Okay, so we'll do uh, do this other side. And then I think we'll call it a day for this video. So we've got the short one going in there. Like so. Ton of thread lock. Start the nut. Which is easier said than done. That's one way of doing it. Hold the nut and turn the spindle. that tight so get a long one long tube slide that on hold that in place thread lock take a nut And hold that nut in place and hold and turn the wheel that would make life a bit easier I think just to start it Short one, short tube. As you can see, the thread lock is just turned into a globule of mess. Let's use that drain up that went a wandering clean the spanner off because it's covered in thread lock and then we've got a long one our last long one with our last long tube fit that into there thread lock on the stud take a nut they're all done and then finally the last short one the last short tube I'm going to drop that into there hold it in drop a thread lock and then start the nut And there we go, they're all in. So I'll go around now and clean up all that stray thread lock that's got everywhere because of the awful dispenser, I guess. I guess that's what's causing the problems. Um, and, we'll, uh, and we'll go from there. So I think we'll call that a day for part eight. Um, 
done quite a bit in this one actually with the, the washes and everything and the dry brushing and hopefully you've uh, you've learnt something from it so um, what I can do now is you can see here I've got a slight colour difference in here so I can take some some of my thinners and just go over and blend them together and there we go also need to put a wash on them don't I so um there we go we've got our return rollers in and we've done the first page of the manual so going over the page the next bit's going to be fun we're starting to fit the the motors and stuff so that'll be part nine i'll see you for then happy modeling and uh hope you've enjoyed this i'll see you soon bye for now guys